For those of you who don't, who don't know Arts Connection, I'm Shauna, project officer. Oh, yeah, now he's joining us as well. <laughs> I knew this would happen the moment we started. <laughs> Um, so I'm Sean Ed, I'm a project officer with Arts Connection. Um, my colleague Shan, who's is in here with us as well. So we're a participatory arts charity and we're normally based in Marcus in Cambathlin. But as most people, because of the lockdown, we've been working from home. And we normally be delivering um, community arts workshops in schools, community centres, care homes, all sorts of different venues. And because of the lockdown, we had to move everything online very quickly, going back to March now. And we decided, Shan found Zoom and decided that that would be the best um, medium to use. And we, we had some teething problems along the way, but we have found we've been able to run a successful programme of workshops with our artists and um, brought in nice crowds, found some nice groups of participants. Um, so we really want to share that with our members. So we've got a few Arts Connection members with us here today. Um, I'm just thinking about how artists now are going to find employment, really. If you're used to delivering community art workshops and you might yourself be shielding and not thinking that you can go back to work in schools, how can you then, as an artist, um, continue to practice, continue to deliver workshops? So that's the context of it, really. Um, so, yes, and if you're interested in Arts Connection, being a member, um, have a look at our website or our Facebook. It's only £12 a year. You get the newsletter um, and there's a few other benefits as well, which is worth mentioning. Um, so Sean and I have a few ideas of specific lessons we've learned using Zoom, things like doing music workshops and so on. But I think um, we'll leave that till later on, until when Jamila's tackling those topics. Um, but I think well, what I'll mention is the security and safety aspect of running a Zoom shop. So there has been quite a bit in the news of um, examples of Zoom workshops being hacked and people entering them and sharing inappropriate images. Um, which has been, you know, which has been a difficulty for some people running Zoom workshop. So we're very conscious of this, and we did a risk assessment, did a risk assessment right back at the beginning. And the way we've approached it is we use the waiting room function of Zoom. So as people register in the weeks leading up to the workshop, um, we have a list of their names and their email addresses, so we can see if they if they look um, like they're real people and not Russian bots. And then when we come to the actual session, like this morning, <clears throat> we have a waiting room. So then we admit people into the session proper. Um, and in that way, we can, keep the, we can keep the workshop secure. So that's how we've been approaching it. Um, I don't know, Sharon, if you've got anything you want to add to that little bit at the top there about the security aspect. Um, I think that covers most of it, but again, I think it also depends on um, who it is that you're working with. So obviously, if it's children, young people, um, particularly you, there is in Zoom, you can lock down the workshops. And once it's all up and running, you can lock it and then nobody else can come in, what, what have you. So uh, I think it's also thinking about who your audience is and, and you know how many security measures you want to put in. Um, but there has been a lot of updates with Zoom, so I think it's generally quite secure these days. Also, we put this another. Sorry, we had a bit of funny noise there. I think um, let me just mute a few people. I think we've just had a few people join us. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you. We've just done a little bit of an introduction of Arts Connection, who we are, and what we do. So if you've just joined us, if you can mute yourselves, because we've got so many participants, which is fantastic. And we've just had a little chat about the waiting, using a waiting room in, um, in Zoom. And if you think about, so we're only really talking about how Arts Connection delivers Zoom workshops. So what we have is we have the artists who are delivering, so let's say, for example, a craft workshop. Um, so either me as the project officer or Shan as the arts manager 
are there in the Zoom workshop. So it's either me or Shan who are managing the participants, who are letting them in from the waiting room. Um, Shan or I can meet participants as well. So say that you're the artist, you've got enough to be thinking about delivering your workshop um, and communicating with the participants. So Shan and I are there to manage the technical aspects of letting people in and out. So hopefully that should give you some, a bit more confidence really to thinking about delivering on yourself, that we're always here to help troubleshoot all those parts of the technical sides of Zoom. That's important to mention, I think. I think it's, if you're delivering outside and on your own, it's worth thinking about, do you have somebody who can help you, but being very yeah. aware that while you're trying to deliver you might have been following the chat that you might have people being admitted into the waiting room. So it's certainly worth kind of having a little crib sheet to yourself that you can kind of keep all those balls because it takes quite a lot of your attention when you're looking everywhere. Um, and it does take a bit of getting used to, I think. Um, so I think, yeah, if you're certainly delivering without support from an organisation, um, it's, it's worth kind of maybe doing a trial run with somebody beforehand just to check that you know exactly how you're using it and how you can kind of balance delivering and the admin side of things. Mm -hmm. And the other thing just to add, um, before I... Oh, we can't hear you, Charlotte. Sorry, you're back. Oh. <clears throat> I'm back, I'm back. Um, what we'll do throughout Jamila's presentation is if you've got questions or you're not quite sure on something, if you pop that in the chat, Sean and I will be keeping an eye. And then after our 15 minute break at the end, we'll come back for a discussion and we'll use your list of questions then as our discussion list for that final 30 minutes. And if anything crops up that is too technical for us to answer or we need just a bit more thinking time, um, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do that thinking and then we'll get our notes, our workshop notes emailed out to you next week if there's anything that we can't quite cover today. Um, so yeah, I think it's over to you now, Jamila. Okay, thank you. Oh, I'm big. Oh, I want to see all of you there. So I'm going to put you on galleries because I prefer that. Um, okay, so uh, my name is Jamila Walker and I live in Shrewsbury and I'm a visual artist. Um, I, my own practice is digital photography and illustration, which I often combine. But my community artwork is quite varied. It's a lot of arts for health, um, experimental drawing and... Um, a lot of collaborative stuff. I'm in a few collectives. So that's just a little background about me. So since the start of lockdown, I've, uh, I started doing Zoom workshops straight away and making art films straight away, which I didn't have a background in at all. So a lot of YouTube tutorials and networking with other artists and helping each other out. So hopefully I've gained enough skills that um, this will be used, well not hopefully, that is very negative of me. I'm gonna be positive. I definitely can help you. <laughs> and um, even if you've done a lot of Zoom things already, um, I think you're always learning and adapting anyway. And if you've never done it before, that's fine too. If you wanna make notes, that's fine, but we are gonna um, collate all the questions and the, my original notes and send them to you if you want them at the end of the session. So don't worry if I, go over things too quickly for you or we haven't explained it I haven't explained it fully um so a lot of if you're working because we're doing this session as a arts connection thing you wouldn't have to deal with registering people and all that sort of stuff because Sean Ed and Sean would do that for you which is fantastic however um I think the main thing for me is to not treat it like you would a workshop in real life. I think you've got to just sort of toss that aside and take some elements from it and adapt them and be flexible because I think that's when it gets stressful. Oh, someone else is trying to join us. Oh, I don't recognise that name. Um, so I think one of the key elements for me is to not get stressed because the ones if I've attended somebody else's workshop and they're saying oh god everything's going wrong and oh I tried to show my screen and it didn't happen then that sort of translates onto you and I think sometimes things will go wrong like we I live in Shropshire the internet is appalling here <laughs> so sometimes things are a bit slower and I think if you just relax into it and just be honest with people and say well this I, I was going to do this but that's not going to work so we're going to adapt 
So I'm a big fan of having lots of options. So I use the chat down. Uh, if you're using a computer, the chat should be on the bottom row of icons in the middle. So I'm going to send you a file and hopefully you should all be able to see it. So I click on the, th if you open chat with me, um, you open and there's three dots on the right hand side and then you can choose who you send it to. So I'm going to send it to everyone publicly and then I go to file and then I'm going to just send you a random image from my computer. Um, and that's how I sort of send reference images to people. So say I'm saying, oh, we're talking about Van Gogh today or pointillism. I'll send them a picture. So I'm going to send you this random picture I found off. I found on Pinterest and then you should all be able to get that. However, regardless of everything's working well, sometimes people can't get it or they don't have the confidence to, um, to, uh, to navigate their screen because they're worried they're going to lose things. Because sometimes if I do something, you guys will swipe to the right. I'm using an old MacBook. So, and that can stress people out. But the worst thing that happens is that you get kicked out of the chat, which I've never had happen. So you could just use the link that you got in the chat to come back in and that would be absolutely fine. Nothing you could press on here would do anything detrimental to anybody. So hopefully you should all get that file. However, if people don't get that file, what I always do is I save all my images that I need on, um, on my iPad and I'll just show it to the screen and that you, and then I, and that, works for some people so I like to have the option because for me not being able to share images is really is uh, would be would not be good for me I want to share images I'm a visual artist I want people to have references and even whether they choose to use them or not I think it would it wouldn't it, it, it adds layers to the workshop for me so that's an important factor you can also um, if you're, say, you're um, a performance artist or a musician and you need to show people intricate things, like um, you, can, you can attach your phone with the lead for your charger to your computer and it will give you, I don't know if you've got an Android, I'm really sorry, you can scroll up and um, there's a mirror image there. So then you can have two cameras so that if you're doing, say, like some guitar work or something like that, then you can show people that. However, if people are using a Kindle or they're using their phone or they're using an old phone, those options aren't always there. So that's another layer to think about that you have reasonable options so that your session is as accessible as possible. Um, one of the things I've also learned is that not everybody has Wi-Fi. If you have limited resources, you might not have Wi-Fi. So you might be on using mobile data or you might only have one computer in the house that everyone is sharing. So that means that sometimes people will have to leave the session early or they won't be able to fully access everything. So it's always nice to have a resource sheet so that you can email it to people so they can still be part of the workshop. They can still send work and be part of an online gallery if you're doing something like that afterwards. So within reason, it's nice to be as accessible as possible. It's, you, it's hard to do that. It's hard to do that because, you know, we, because it's live, you can't have captioning and things like that. But there are, there are ways. Okay, so I'm going to talk about some of the potential, I want to say it in a positive way, but I'm thinking challenges. Um, <laughs> some of the things that can, that you can factor in, but you, you can't get to, you just have to sort of be flexible and go with the flow as well. So time delays. If people have live in the sticks, they might not have great internet. So some things might come and go. So you might have to repeat things. So I often log on 15 minutes before the session starts, just so... You, you can help anybody with any, um, well, Sean and Sean would do that as well, help people with any technical issues so that hopefully you're ready to start on time, but you rarely do. Um, staying visible is really important, I think, especially if you're doing performance art, music. So what I often do is, because mine's visual, I mark the table where you can see, because you can go on before you joined the, um, session you would have had the option I think I've got a screen grab for that I'll try and send that 
um, you can send, yeah, it's private, it's publicly, you can um, choose, you can test your microphone and test your screen. So you can have a quick look to see what your area is going to look like, what people are going to see, what your camera is going to see. Let me find the file. Da, 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 da. Zoom. So what I do is I, I put everything in a folder that I need for each workshop. So when I want to send images, they're already there and I don't have to look for them. So, yes. So after you've done a sign in, so I'm sending you the sign in page. Um, yeah, after you've done a sign in, you'll have the option to test your um, microphone and test your screen and you can have a look. You can just go through all the options, make sure that your sound is okay and it will just take you through it. Can't do anything wrong, honestly. And then you can see what you want to, you can see how your screen's gonna look. So you might wanna move your house about a bit, you know. So I always, I use a um, masking tape to mark on the table so I can make sure that everyone can see my um, easel. I forgot the word easel. So, and it's not, it's not great for me as a visual artist drawing on here because it often means, uh, see, I use this easel here, and then I use a big pad so people can see. This is a <laughs> this is a badger that I drew for somebody um, who was having a was going to do a book about culling badgers. Um, that was just like the prep drawing. So I do that, which means that I have to put it on lots of boxes <laughs> so that you can see it on screen, and it means that I have to draw a little bit sideways so people can see. And so I've, I, in one way that I've adapted my practice is that I start, I use Sharpies now because um, it, you can't, otherwise using pencil, it's really hard to see what's going on. So I will say that to people, I'll say this isn't a technique I would usually use or this, I find this a bit difficult, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I think it's always good to have a practice run. If you've got another computer in the house and somebody else that can help you, they can go in another room because you'll get feedback from the noise and see how things look because they might look okay to you but not so great on a, another screen. However, you can prep in many, many, many ways and things still might not go exactly according to plan. So I wouldn't get super caught up, but you know, to be forewarned is to be something, whatever. You know, be prepared like a scout or something. Okay, so yes, so time delays can be an issue, so you might have to repeat yourself, but you know, that's fine. That's fine, you know. Um, I think you want people to feel really comfortable. So some people might not want to show their face on the screen, and that's fine. And I find that a little difficult because I want to, I want to make eye contact with people. I miss real workshops. However, some people might feel a lot more comfortable and happy. So I try and check in with everyone. Let's start with this one because there's loads of you. But I'll, I'll sort of, uh, you can see everyone's names on the bottom left of everyone's icon. Um, sometimes it's not their name because <laughs> sometimes I log in on my husband, so it'll say Stuart. But um, <laughs> um, so I think that's quite nice to use people's names to check in on them. Um, and with Arts Connection, we've been really lucky that um, we've had a lot of repeat um, visitors to my drawing workshops and then you're getting to know people and they're telling you a little bit about their lives so it feels a little bit like you're having some real connections which has been fantastic however even in a short session uh, I did one for the Hive in Shrewsbury recently with some young carers and even in that short session we did get to know each other and people were making jokes and it was it was I felt like it went really well um, so that's another barrier because you you can't you can't like pick up people's work. Sometimes they'll show me their work and we'll say like, we'll have a drum roll and we'll all show each other our work. And you still can't really see it properly because their lighting isn't great, which is fine because they're the participants. But I think it's good to make your lighting as suitable for your session as possible. So I have a, um, a lamp behind me, behind the screen, which is slightly in the middle. And if I look up too much, it blinds me, but it, it, it gives me a slightly more even light because I've got a big bay window here, but then not so much light over there, just so everyone can see you and they can see what you're doing and it doesn't look, you know, you, you look a bit more accessible. Um, also, I did hear recently, I, I don't do this, but uh, it's, not, it's not customary to do them in your bedroom. 
mm. or have like your personal life, like your clothes hanging up either. So, you know, think about your space. You can put backgrounds on actually. How do you put backgrounds on? I've forgotten. Uh, you go into um, video settings. Video settings. Where's that? Um, oh, sorry, my husband's here, by the way, because he's a musician and he's used Zoom many times. So he has another out, um, another sort of uh, insight onto this. Go next to the little arrow which says stop video. Yeah. Click on the arrow. Yes. And then you can oh yeah, you can choose, choose a virtual, virtual background. background. So you can choose like um a uh, like undersea background. I mean, they can be a bit distracting, and they don't always work depending exactly yeah, like Shad in the jungle. <laughs> and so Shad, wonderful. Oh, oh, I like that one with the sun. Can everyone see Shad Hutchinson? She might be on a different screen from you. Oh, see, that's really creepy. I'm going to say no. Don't use a background. They're horrible. Oh no, I hate it. Take it off. <laughs> I don't like. But you can, if you say if your room's really messy and you want to. <laughs> so um, how do you do that again, Emma? You go to where it says stop video, there's an arrow if you're using a computer that's pointing upwards. If you click on that, you've got choose a virtual background and then you can choose from you there. Can also, I don't know why you don't see, but you can also turn yourself upside down or at 90 degrees. Oh, so did you hear that? You can turn yourself upside down or at 90 degrees if you should so wish. Yes, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why you'd want to do that. Um, <laughs> okay, so that so you do have that option because I do think your setting because if you were having a workshop and people were coming to a theatre or a community centre, you would set a scene, wouldn't you? You would um, you would make the environment inviting. You'd make a little breakout room. You'd have a little seating area for parents and carers if it was for children. So you you can still think about your environment and making it as accessible and visible as possible. See, I have got like some rainbow lights and I had fairy lights. And I wanted to make mine really um, colourful and nice for children when I was doing children workshops. However, they just looked overexposed and you couldn't see anything. So, <laughs> so you, it's always good to have a little practice. Or you can pick a photo from your files. Sean, that's brilliant. I didn't know you could do that. That's really good. Yeah, that would be even better if you were wanted to demonstrate some work as well. So you could use your background could be um, some work or a reference that you wanted to see. That's another option. That's really helpful. Okay, thank you. Uh, no, Jamila, sorry to disturb you in your flow. No, some, please don't. Some people are just saying it might not be possible to get all that functionality on an iPad or a phone. Yeah, we so yeah. might. If you're on a laptop or a computer, you might have just those few more options with backgrounds and stuff like that. But on a phone, possibly not. Yeah, that is that is a big factor, and that is a factor when with the participants as well. So you might you might say, oh, can you? One of the wonderful things about Zoom is that you can share screens, which is if you're using an i um, a computer. Um, is the icon at the bottom next to chat. I think if you're using a Kindle or an iPad, I don't know why I'm pointing up, it's at the top and you can share screen so you can show what's on your desktop or your um, main page or any reference images or videos or films. However, if you're using a Kindle, that doesn't always work. So again, always have another option. And you can also do a mutual drawing as well on shared screen as well. So in the notes, I will send you how to share a screen. And that's a really good option. And I- I'm jump I, in there. Say that again? I was gonna jump in there and just say from our experience, we found internet is quite bad. So yeah. it can take 10, 20 seconds for anything to even start exactly. happening. So we've always planned to, but then haven't because it's just very long. Um, it's, it's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, um, I, I had a workshop where share, we were going to do layers and sharing, a, we were going to do sharing a screen and I had a practice with my husband and he went to the computer for upstairs and he, it was absolutely fine. And then I started, I started a session with Sean Ed and Sean and I started, uh, we came on early to have a practice and it didn't work at all. So if you have that as an option, because it would be useful, mm. always have a backup. <laughs> because it might not work and it might mean that some people can't be involved and that would limit their experience and and that would so basically even though there are lots of wonderful functions probably keeping it as simple as possible to keep it as accessible as possible 
is possibly the best best option but I, do, I wouldn't want to put you off experimenting and being um creative with um with zoom but it can limit people and as someone who lives in a really rubbishy internet area yeah that would that could potentially be an issue for me yeah that's a really good point sean thank you um what else are we talking about oh yeah um oh yeah so cre creating a space so um so think about so have a practice with what you're going to do where you're going to be if you're a performance artist it's definitely a good idea to move um furniture make markers so you're not ever off screen you don't want to be like lying on the floor and then people are still looking at your wall and things like that they want to be able to see you and connect with you um uh lighting issues have an experiment with light because not being able to see people i've, I've done some where people are completely silhouetted which is fine because they're the participants but i think if i was doing the workshop and the the leader was um I lost my notes, um, was silhouetted, I'd find that a bit disconcerting. However, some people might not mind. Um, da -da 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 -da. So yeah, basically be flexible and, and, and have fun. And I think, oh, charge your computers, charge your computers before the session, have them charging during, because Zoom uses a lot of um, power. Might be worth saying, turn off any other Wi-Fi using devices you've got. Yeah, in that's a really good point. Yes, if, you're use, if you've got Wi-Fi attached to ev other things in the house while you're doing your workshop and you don't need them, you could just turn, you could turn the Wi-Fi off temporarily because that will help your connection with other people. That's a really good point. I don't do that. I'm gonna start doing that, it's a good idea, thank you. Um, what you could do as well, you could have um, a Zoom cafe, which is uh, like a little short, 10 15 minute invitation for people who've maybe never used zoom before to have a little play with the um facilities meet you introduce yourself um so that people can get a bit confident before they come to the workshop because it is a big it is a big deal you know if, even if people are really computer savvy you know because there's always that awkward bit at the start where new people are there waiting and everyone's just sort of looking at each other and having a nosy at people's houses and stuff so if you if that's an option for you you can um have a little mini talk or sometimes um, my husband works with designs in mind um in Oswald Street, which is an arts for health studio they make little videos and they just have a little introduction and say hi i'm so and so and i do this at the studio um so that could be a way of that could be a way of introducing yourself even if it's just a photo of you it just breaks down that barrier because it is a big deal for people to come especially people who don't feel completely confident with technology and who are being forced to use more technology to engage with the world okay um i think as well encouraging people to use the chat or send you um uh if they don't want to speak up in front of other people and unmute themselves because sometimes people might have a question Perfect example of what can go <laughs> go wrong. Um, I would think Jamila's had some issues with uh, the internet. So, if, you know, everything's above board. Jamila, we what might have to go back because she just froze for a good oh. 30 seconds. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, it just said my internet was unstable. See, example, terrible Shrewsbury. Um, I don't know what I was talking about. What was I talking about? Uh, I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> I'll come back to it. It'll be fine. Um, da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah, safeguarding. I did that. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah, chat. I said, oh, people might have questions. They might want to ask questions, but they don't want to ask it in front of lots of people. So that um, encourage people at the start of the session to use the chat to ask your question or um, the, another icon you might be able to see at the bottom or the top of your screen is reactions. So you can either clap or put your thumb up and that might be a way of asking questions um, and like putting your hands up. But you know, if you just sort of look at people's faces, like often I'll prep a, a, a session, uh, an activity. And if everyone's head's still down, then that means like they're concentrating and that's great, they're enjoying it. But then somebody might be doing this and I think, <laughs> I think oh, they're bored. And I might have a little activity for them to do. 
But one of the things that has been hard for me is being like completely silent when everyone else is working because I feel like I'm not doing anything, I'm not helping. But I think if you're clear on what your brief is before people join, they'll know what kind of workshop it's going to be. Is it because some of them, like uh, Designs in Mind, they do workshops where uh, you can just join and everyone has their own projects and we're all just working together and there's lots of long periods of silence. So I think if people have a breakdown, bullet points of what's going to happen um, in the session, what they need to bring with them, you know, do they need comfortable clothes? Do they need any paper? Um, that's another thing, actually. Materials has been quite an issue for me because I have to plan workshops with accessible materials. I mean, some projects, they'll get a box with the materials they'll need for that session. However, that's not that's that's not really necessarily practical because what if people don't turn up or you don't know who's going to come or it means that people have to register so it often has to be things that people the materials list needs to be something needs to be things that people will probably have at home most people will have paper so a lot of mine have been collage and drawing things thank you um, um and paper and i've even said to people if you haven't got any paper use the cardboard that your parcels have arrived in or an old envelope so and we are we always put in a materials list on the registration however many many people will arrive and they haven't gathered any of the um, materials in preparation and that's fine you just you know just keep chivying people along and go have you got your plant to draw have you got a drink with you you know and that's that's fine because that's people you know who and you know we forget we've got a lot of we've got a lot going on this is a, okay um what else did I want to talk about? Oh, you can do breakout rooms if you wanted to. Say if you were doing a, a music workshop or a perf performance one, that might be particularly useful. Um, where is that? <laughs> I've forgotten where breakout rooms is. Is it? Oh, okay. That is more yeah i think breakout rooms is uh one of those things you have to have enabled on your account oh yes you go into your settings and enable it so i've got it down where all the other icons are because it's enabled okay i don't have that that's why yes so but it's <laughs> one of those extra settings um and you can put people in breakout rooms before the workshop so everybody it's runs quite smoothly but again, I think it works really well if um, you need maybe a group of five or six people together mm -hmm. um, rather than kind of this big scenario, uh, which is working well for what we're doing. But you might be running something like we say, maybe performance or something like that, but you can create them and then come back into the main room. Yeah, it's um, great. And there's a timer on it. So it'll be like, like I was in a breakout room for some training recently and it was like 10, nine. And we were like, oh, we haven't got our ideas together. And then, and then you come back and join the main group. So there is some, like how you might have split off to work in separate small groups. That can be quite useful. Uh, I think the only problem is I don't think you can record those if you're in a breakout room for safeguarding. So that might be something you want to think about. But you can send people off. They can go off and work. Because if it's an Arts Connection session, they've paid for it. So they're, they're not limited to just 40 minutes. Because if you have your own Zoom and you haven't paid for the um, app, it's, so they're only 40 minutes. However, you can just use that link to come back in and start again. But they, you know, um, so the breakout rooms can be, can be useful if you need to give people some time to work together. Okay, so that, that could be useful. Um, um sometimes people might just want to raise their hand to ask a question so it's always good to be having a nosy at what's what's going on but that's why it's really good that these sessions have someone from arts connection because they can do all that sort of um admin and back and forth because to be honest as much as this has been a weird way to work i do enjoy aspects of it because i don't have to leave my house or pack a bag but it is really quite draining as a creative because you're using parts of your brain you haven't used before. You're not having real connections. And I've read some studies that have said that your brain gets really overwhelmed with the fact that you're not having, you're having to work and read people's faces in a really flat form because we're not with each other really. So you don't, you want to make it as easy on you as well so that you can enjoy something, that you can learn something for your practice as well. So, but, um, 
I think I think the main thing for me since doing these Zoom ones is to um, is to just be really honest and relaxed with it because when things don't go as you planned, I think if you're just honest with people and say, oh well, I was going to do that, but that didn't work out, or how do you guys feel about it to give people a bit of autonomy and say would you like to do this if not i've got this option however don't overload people with too many options either you know um da, 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 what else um yeah so we've talked about people having the option if they want to have their screen off if they want to that's fine um do, do, do. Uh, backgrounds, nice lighting, breakout rooms, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, using music. If you need to use music um, and everyone is not muted, if they talk or cough or their dog barks, it will cut out the sound. Because you can see the, the yellow box around me. I don't know why I'm doing that. Why am I pointing? You can't see what's... <laughs> you can't see my screen. Um, that means that I'm the one talking and I am the one who has all the volume and sound. So sometimes it's better if you need music to use a link for say YouTube or something like that um, and send that file to other people so that they can all use that and use their sound. However, sound is iffy to be honest. And if you're gonna be doing musical things with people, it might be best to give people a task and they toodle off and do that in their own space at their own time because trying to share music with the, with the sound issues with the time delays, <laughs> so I'm like I'm being really negative. It's very positive. You can do lots of great stuff on there. It can. It's it's going to be hard to harmonise. It's going to be hard to make sound. What were you going to say, Charlotte? So yeah, I was just going to jump in there. Um, we we've tried doing quite a few musical things because oh, yeah. we would do with Arts Connection. Um, so um, <laughs> we tried sort of congregational singing, so everybody's singing along at the same time, but like everyone else. It just didn't work at all. So everybody's internet speed at home is slightly different. So there is just always going to be a lag. Unfortunately, that means no singing together, which is very sad. We'll just have to wait for choirs to come back. But um, so yeah, we had to we had to adapt that basically. Um, and we've also been running a, a drumming workshop, which has become very popular. So right back at the start, we were hoping we'd be able to drum along together, but that just wasn't possible. So what we've been doing is similar to this session. Uh, once we get started, we mute all the participants and then Shep, the drum leader, is, um, you know, is setting rhythms, maybe playing them for five, ten minutes and people at home are drumming along. They can hear the leader drumming, but they can't hear everyone else around them. So that's been working very well. That's been working very well. And we were worried at the start that maybe we just can't do anything with music, but we have found a way around it. So if anyone in particular is thinking about music performance and has got questions, just get in touch with us because we might be able to find a way around. Um, because, you know, and, and oh, oh, yes, one other thing to mention is um, Zoom likes to compress sound. It's designed for the, the spoken word, basically. So the microphone is, is zooming in on your voice so if you're playing instrument at the same time it will automatically block out one of the noises so you'll either hear just the drum or just the voice so if you go into your at the bottom of your screen this might be different on the phone if on the bottom of your screen if you go to the up arrow next door to mute and then you get audio settings right at the bottom of that menu audio settings and then if you click on audio settings, um, you've got speaker and then some, some options. And then you've got microphone and some options. If you uncheck the automatically adjust volume button, that should get rid of any compression um, or blocking out instrument noises. That's what we've been using anyway. But again, any particular niche questions about music, just send them to us and we'll see if we can help. Thanks, Jamila. Okay, uh, great. Oh, that was really good. Um, so I think I've gone through all my notes so far. Yeah, so and I think it's quarter to now, it's quarter to 11. So um, um, I think to sum up, um, be your fabulous selves, be flexible, 
um, rely on Sean Ed and Shard met very muchly. And um, I think I think also I think I particularly worried that just talking at people and doing a bit of drawing could be really boring. And so I was like, I had lots of props and, you know, and, I, and then I thought, even I'm not a children's TV presenter. Just, you know, have faith in your material and people, they, they want to attend and they will engage with you. And it will be it just, you know, still take what you've done from your traditional sessions, but just adapt it to um, adapt it to the Internet. And it is a very limited um, uh, space the, the computer screen however sometimes limitations can be really freeing and they could pull things back down to what you know what the main aim is so I hope um, I hope this has been useful um, uh, and um, I think we're gonna have a break and if you've got any questions you put them in the chat and then we'll um, address those questions in the last part of the, sec the session okay I didn't get through all the questions okay um, you so shout out some questions that you guys got Um I had one of the questions was um, how much does Zoom cost? Um, it depends on what you, which package you buy and how many participants you want. It can be from £11 a month. So um, it really depends because you can have, you can have hundreds of participants if you really want. So, um, and that costs more. So um, it would depend on what you need it for. Well, a free um, version will give you a 40 minute seat. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have done that and then taken a natural tea break after 40 minutes and then done another meeting. So yeah. you could do that. Uh, they do have a deal on at the minute if you want to get a year. So it's costing more like nine, 10 pounds a month instead of the usual kind of 13, 14. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think any of you are gonna need more than that next package up because you're then talking about 500 participants, which, yeah. 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 But also to mention, if you're, if you're delivering for Arts Connection, then you would be delivering it through our account. So you wouldn't need your own account then to have a session that was longer than 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah, and you don't even need to get the app if you're using um, Arts Connections. You can just use the link to get in it. Like the same way, if you wanted to use like Facebook version of Zoom, you don't need a Facebook account. So it's you just follow the link. And um, somebody said, "How do I change my name on there?" And um, when you register, um, when you follow the link from Arts Connection, it will ask for your email address, ask you to confirm your email address, and you can put your name in there. I have sometimes forgotten to do that, and then I've been called Stuart the whole session, because I've, it's just logged on to Stuart's automatically. But if you don't have room on your computer or tablet to have the app on there, you don't necessarily need it, and you can just, but I would advise logging on before your session. So if there's any technical issues, like my computer crashed today, that you're not all flustered at the start of your session and you're all, you're all groovy. Um, to, oh yeah, um, Stuart said to me that you can, as well as um, adding another mirroring your screen on your phone, you can actually add another um, screen which you attach with your core, your U, USB, USB, and then you go to um, share screen advanced, and then you have options to add your iPad or your uh, phone or another computer or a webcam, and that might be a way of doing it. However, again, like we discussed earlier, adding more screens and technology can sometimes mean that it's less accessible for other people, but it depends on what, what you need to share with your participants and if it's worth it. And you could even do, you could even find out who's coming and what they're gonna, what, what they're using. But yeah, Kindle, Kindles, it seems like they're the most um, inhospitable for um, Zoom. And um, what we was also, that? We've also had a question about, um, so using, so similar to that, using two devices. Sometimes people do log on twice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people, you know, on one device, the camera doesn't work. And on the other one, the microphone doesn't work. So they'll log on twice. Um, so your Zoom, if you have a Zoom log on, You'll be, so say you've got a laptop, you'll have it logged in on your laptop and you can have it logged in on your phone. So you could have both devices on that same Zoom workshop. So say you wanted one camera aiming at your, you know, from the neck up. And if you're present, if you're doing clog dancing, for example, <laughs> one camera on your feet. Exactly. So that, 
that's an option as well but as Jamila says always go to do dry runs of these before you before you start working yeah it is it's really hard because uh, Stuart's been um teaching uh, guitar on um zoom and then he can't if if his uh, student moves a little bit out of the way he can't see the fingers as well so sometimes it's good for the other person to have two screens but adding the more elements you add into it the more issues that are potentially come up so i would keep it as simple as possible to be honest um where where you can but some things you really do want people to see fine detail and things like that so um but you could you could always take photos of things and then add them on the chat we've had we haven't really had that many issues with the chat occasionally people say they can't see files but i would say for me personally that's been the most reliable way of showing or just physically having books um and then showing and showing it to the screen and things like that um remember that if you write anything it's going to be backwards <laughs> as well so that is relevant so you might if you've got any text to send people you can um or you can always say i'll send it at the end uh yeah so you can use a webcam as well if you and um often the images are better on mine anyway on my phone rather than my screen so it depends on what level of quality you want to have um, and and emma jane made a really great comment which i loved and i'm going to have which was using contrasting cut contrasting paper when you're doing uh, cutting things out and showing um and that just makes it more visible so you know get your color wheel out and um and see like orange and purple contrast each other so you can so if you're showing people things they'll be able to see it slightly better then um and those are the other questions that i've got through so far have you got any other questions you guys yeah i had one <laughs> coming from amanda about using eventbrite um so we put things on uh to register through our website and facebook uh you may not have either of those and eventbrite is a good one to use if you're doing it for free because they will charge quite high fees if you are charging for it but eventbrite is a good one it's searchable it's really well known um, I also, I'm going to kind of go into getting paid there because it kind of links. So I know somebody uses Jigsaw Box, which kind of allows you to create courses um, and links quite well to PayPal so that people sign up and have to pay for PayPal and then they can access the course. And that's not the only one. There's a few like that. So I think it's kind of looking at what kind, whether it's Eventbrite, Jigsaw Box, what's the best platform for you to host that on if you're, if you're particularly out of a website or your Facebook. Uh, but also, like I said, they are quite searchable. Uh, they're used by people. But also then thinking about how you get, if you're looking to get paid, a lot of people at the moment are using paypal.me because it's quite easy that people can, uh, you just put your name on it. Uh, and people have, that's worked quite well for people. Um, but again, there's other ways of doing that. Like Jigsaw Box will allow you to use the PayPal platform to follow it through. You can, again, charge people through Eventbrite. Uh, but they do take quite a, a cut of your ticket prices there. And Amanda was also, I think, saying about what do you charge? Um, I think a lot of people have struggled with how to do that, really. But I, a lot of people I've seen have been charging £4 a session. So if they've been doing Zumba or yoga, you know, quite regular, weekly, hour-long sessions, they've been charging about £4. I've seen quite a lot of people have maybe been doing four-week courses. They've been charging about £20. So again, I think you need to think about what it is that you're providing, what is it still costing you, but also understanding that some people may be, they miss them. So I know a lot of people have then been providing the video afterwards, mm -hmm. um, which is quite common so that for a week afterwards, people can still access that for the four pounds. Um, and also to think about your time. So I do Zimba regularly and what she started doing is I think she now does a job lot on one day and then you can just access them when you want rather than running them weekly, because she's find that people are struggling to kind of remember to come online. So you might want to be thinking about how you, if you're not doing them live, we've been doing them live, but a lot of other people, like if you look at Impello, uh, they uh, are based down Landod and they do dance, but they've just been doing pre-filmed ones and then putting them on YouTube. So I think it's thinking about your practice, uh, what kind of interaction you want, what you think works, works best and pricing. Uh, but everybody's doing it just a bit differently. So I think, like I said, we will put some of these resources on so that you can kind of check them out, see if they're any good to you. Okay. That's great, yeah. Um, 
Uh, somebody's asked about sharing screens again. We did talk about that earlier, but it will be in the notes because it really does depend on what device you're using. And um, and you, I, I think um, what I what I found disappointing is that I really wanted to do collaborative drawing and using a share screen and that just wasn't really an option. So there are other ways we can still work collaboratively. Some musicians I know, they will um, set a task and then they'll, um, people will make their music separately or they'll send the files and then they'll collate it afterwards and then listen to it all together with everyone on mute. So there is ways of collaborating, but you just have to be a little bit more flexible and work with your group and their needs and their their um their their potential access issues um i've got a few jamila if you want oh, me to yes, me. Um, so we've done the we've done the two devices or different screens have we talked about changing the name because we had salvador dali taking part in this session at one at one <laughs> um you can do that when you register yeah, we talked about it before. Yeah, when you register, you can change your name. I'm not sure if you can change it once you're already in there. Yeah, so once, if you look oh, at your yeah. face, um, if you look at your face at the top right hand corner, there's the three little dots. So that's your... Oh, yes, rename. That's the Sorry. <laughs> in that list. So that's something I learned in this session today. Ah, uh, that's good. Yes, you can rename yourself. Um, we had a question, and I think Edna's left this session now, but she was mentioning getting materials to people at home is difficult. So yeah. that's obviously, you know, a big thing for craft practitioners. So the way we've been approaching it as an organization is we've only really been doing workshops for things, objects you can find at home. So we've been doing quite a few makey things involving recycled objects. People have always got in their recycling bins and with Jamila in particular, we've been doing drawing challenges. So again, that's very low fi in terms of the equipment you need at home. We are having a discussion within the office about whether we do move forward to sending out supplies to people, but that is fraught with difficulties, really, mm. um, especially when you're thinking about contamination. Um, so the way we've approached it is we have gone for activities that are suitable for equipment that's in the home, basically. Yeah. Um, anything you'd like to add to that, Jamila, that you found delivering workshops? Yeah. It is, it is difficult to, because not even people, not everyone has um, even colouring um, crayons and things like that. And, and some, um, I'm running a project with the Cube and a charity called Taking Part. And, um, and, um, and we had artists send in proposals and then we picked them for people in day service. And even things like, we realise that people don't always have scissors at home either. So I'm doing a collage workshop and I'm going to factor in the fact that people might not have scissors. So we're going to do folds and rips instead. So you, um, because this is just second nature to us to be creative, we'll have all those resources in, but not everyone does. And you don't want to alienate people. So, and you don't want people to necessarily have to ask like, and say, Oh, I haven't got this or I don't have that. Or you want to be able to preempt their needs beforehand because sometimes people might be a little embarrassed or, um, or not even or not even take part initially because they don't think well I don't have an easel and she's got an easel in the picture or I don't have a yoga mat you know so that if we just sort of I know you can't think of everyone's situations but just to make it as inviting as possible um I think that's I think that's a really key thing with the materials but I think there's always a way of adapting there's always a way that can make it more suitable for other people yeah so any, any more questions I've got yeah, loads, got Jamila. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with one from Sally because I think that's a really interesting one to ask. And she's just said, "Has your confidence increased um, mm. from doing this as you from the first one to now?" Loads, loads. I would. I thought I was gonna be sick the first couple of ones, but I've been really lucky that um, I've worked for a few companies, and the the um, the organisations always stay with us. And um, and I've done probably the most for Arts Connection so far, and it's always Sean Ed or Sean. So I feel that's really helpful. And having that dialogue before you go into the workshop is really important. So even if even if it's just emails, but if it's a real life call or a Zoom call, I think that's helped. But I think um, we were all finding our feet in early April, late March when I started. So my confidence has definitely gone up. 
but I was incredibly nervous for this because I've never done this before. But I think with, um, as I've, mm, I've been doing drawing ones and I did a few well-being ones. So I did a bit of mindfulness at the start of my sessions. And sometimes I do mindfulness in um, non-arts for health practice as well. And I was like, oh, is this wrong? Am I a fraud? But I just, I suppose I, I try and take the feedback. They give, um, there's feedback as well at the end of every Arts Connection session. So you're often building and then taking some things away and moving. But I think being flexible and being honest and being friendly and being yourself is the most. But yeah, my confidence has got a lot higher because I just uh, felt, I felt like, I just kept thinking about all the things I'd lost from doing workshops in situ. And now I've sort of changed my attitude to just being a bit more like, well, what things can we gain from this? And, and me being at home, has been a lot more comfortable because I like my home and even though so I haven't had to compromise with my materials by you know sometimes if I work for an organization and I've said oh can you buy such and such a paint and they've bought a paint that I've never used before then I'm like oh you know I can troubleshoot a lot easier so in some ways I could prepare better so yeah there's definitely been some advantages to it but yeah I want to I, I want to, I want to like, I want to nosy at people's work properly. I miss, I miss being able to um, see people's work in situ. I think that's the most, yeah, hard. So yes, definitely. The more you do, the more confident you feel. And if you get to work in nice organisations, that's, it's a collaboration. And this practice has definitely fed my own practice as well. So I felt like I've de I'm developing my artistic work as well through this. So yeah. That's a, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go to somebody who was asking about muting people and chattiness. Uh, again, I think it depends on what you're running. So we've been running workshops where we mostly do mute people because we've got some deleading, but we might have moments where they stop and just say, you know, kind of feedback to me, show me your pictures. But then we've also done things like open mic nights where we tend to be a bit more chatty in between. It's a bit more informal. We maybe have a chat at the beginning and the end. So I really think it kind of depends on what you're running and what you want to do. You'll find things like this webinars. It's, it is more interactive on the chat rather than it is in person because there's so many of us, it's quite hard to do. Uh, like I said, again, it might be that you have breakout rooms, in which case you can just all, all unmute yourselves and have a chat with maybe five or six of you. But as soon as you have more than five or six, you will find it's very hard to um, do this. But I mean, Terry, who's here, ran an improv uh, workshop for us and I, there was about six of us. And that worked really well. But if we'd had any more, we couldn't have actually run that session in that manner because uh, yeah, it's about how many you have, what you're doing. You do need to think about that. Um, and in terms of timings for workshops, again, that's been hit and miss for us. We, that's kind of been a learning thing. So we find a lot of workshops work quite well for an hour and a half. But like we're saying, Zoom, it, you know, it does take a lot of your attention. So like the drumming, we only do say 50 minutes an hour uh, because you do just start to drift. So um, and Sharon's here, she's been delivering Masquerade for us, uh, which is an uh, arts and drama club for adults with learning disabilities. And we find about an hour and a half is a good amount of time in for that. By the time everybody's done an introduction, we've done some games, and then everybody has, you know, a song and a bit of a sign off. That kind of is a nice amount of time. I wouldn't suggest particularly doing more than that. Um, I just think it, you just find it very difficult to keep everybody engaged. But again, it depends on what you're doing, how often, who the group is, um, and how well they know each other. So, uh, but things to think about. Shall I just carry on? I've got a whole list. Let's go. <laughs> if, you, if, if you're happy to, I'm happy to. I've learned stuff. Oh, sorry, Sean, Ed. No, it's totally fine. If you're happy, Sean, I can chip in if you like. I've got my list as well. You go for it, Sean. So I've uh, just seen quite a lot of questions there around care homes. Uh, it's not just care homes. It will be particularly working maybe with schools as they go back to school. Um, there's quite big issues around technology and also about safeguarding. So when you came into this, you should have had a little, uh, it's not a warning, but a little disclaimer just saying we are recording this. So with a lot of our workshops, what we do is spotlight people. So we don't have it. I was going to say, a lot of you may not know, but if you go to the top of your screen, you can choose whether you want to see speaker view or gallery view. But what happens when we're recording is at the moment we've got Jamila spotlighted and that's the only person being recorded on the video. So we always use spotlight video, so we're not recording everybody and only of the artist. So whatever, so I can then put those on YouTube if I want to, because they're the only person. So you might... <laughs> 
one day lots of people want to see them they want to re-watch and take part again Jamila but you need to be clear about in the you can either do that as part of the registering process or as people sign up that you're letting them know what you're doing if you are recording that's really important um, I think then if you're working particularly with vulnerable groups you probably do need to make that part of your sign up register so whether that's or Eventbrite or whatever you're using um, again it can get quite difficult with forms and technology again and emails um, and also really, if you're going to work in care homes and schools so we've been looking at that for quite a while but you'll find they don't have their own separate tablets we found this doing masquerade you know people having access to their own devices um, a lot of them don't I know Welsh government has been actually distributing tablets to care homes so that people can have more access and communication with family a lot of people are actually shielding within care homes they're in their own room so they're not out generally so you think about how many devices you might need again like we were saying about using art packs think about the health and safety uh you know about touching things um and you know shauna's been doing a project project pen pal and uh, she's actually been doing that through email and absolutely you know so instead of people sending letters they've been sending them to her she's given them to the care homes the care homes are sending them back to her via email and then she's passing them back out so I think part of what we're trying to say is, you know, it's kind of re reviewing and changing your practice. But I think there's just a lot more to think about um, uh, in terms of health and safety with some things that you're attempting to do. And also thinking about what people might have access to. Um, yeah. so, but again, those people that are asking about the care homes, uh, there's I have been sent a, a document from somebody because this is a conversation that's going on for lots of people at the minute and thinking about what's the best way to do that and I don't think anybody has the answer to that exactly right at this minute but I think there's certainly a lot of discussions happening about how do we move forward and supporting them because they obviously will continue to shield a lot longer than you know many of us. Yeah oh I wanted to say um, about being a co-host of um, I don't think we covered that did we? No. Yeah uh, being a co-host of a, the Zoom meeting means that um, Sean and Sean Ed will have set the meetings up but then when you're a, if they make you a co-host then you have access to um, certain icons and options within the group like you can mute everybody you can share files and things like that so that's quite a that, that gives you a little bit more options however if you haven't if you're not you haven't set the meeting up you get slightly less so that that, they, that might be worth um, think considering in your prep what you need to um, what you want to share with people and how you want to share it and if because you might not even need to be a co-host at all so that might be something worth considering if you need those extra options Any? You could also Stuart's, Stuart's piping up <laughs> go on speak loudly if you're the host <laughs> if you are the host of the meeting you also have the option to make anybody else in the meeting the host oh yeah so that temporarily could mean that they could if they've got things that they wanted to show with the people at the meeting that run their computer they could then share their screen, but you'd have to give them the yeah. permission to do that. And then just do that temporarily. Did everyone hear that? Did you hear that? Oh, great. Yeah, that's very useful. I didn't know you could do that. That's cool. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> we had um, one good suggestion or question from someone who was saying that um, check if your computer or device is fully updated before you start a session. That's a really good tip because I've been caught out with that kind of thing for now. Um, just make sure that your phone or your iPad that you've checked for um, software updates. You can probably just search on your device software updates and it'll take you to the right program and just run all the updates before you do a session. Um, and it just means that everything hopefully should go without a problem. And I just see Inika's made a comment there that so when she's using two devices in the house to attend a workshop, the internet stops so people might find that if you've got low low speed internet mm -hmm. two devices is probably just too much and it won't work so unfortunately you'll just have to use one device but again dry runs are a good way of checking that kind of thing yeah oh that's a really good point yeah yeah be as prepped as possible especially if you're not confident with you know um with technology maybe make yourself a checklist so that you've got that ready for each one you know you've charged you i just keep my charger in the whole time um and i have a pile of stuff that i use for workshops and what i do as well because sometimes i can get frazzled i if i'm going to show reference books i i mark the pages with a t um with a post-it note where I write them down and I'm, I don't trust any of my technology. So I back everything up to the cloud and I put it, make sure that I sync 
sync it up with my iPad as well because at the start of this session my screen went black for no reason I hadn't left it hadn't um it hadn't left so you just so you you're not so you just uh, to give yourself as much confident and comfort as possible oh yeah what I was going to say if you're sharing your screen on your phone um remember to turn off the thing that makes it go to sleep what's that called what's that thing when it goes to sleep Sort of a screen lock. A screen lock, because otherwise, unlike your computer, it will lock itself and then that'll interfere with what you're showing people. If you're showing them a video or you're showing them, and that's just something else to faff about with because mine's already gone to sleep because it's on like, goes to sleep after five seconds. So remember to do that. I mean, you can do it in the session. There'll be probably periods in the session where everyone's quietly working and you can do stuff like that with them. But um, yeah. Um, I was based on the sharing actually because I've had a couple. Um, somebody said because we found screen sharing quite difficult. Yeah. Actually, what I've seen with a lot of things, somebody said this, but having prepared slides, so you could do like a PowerPoint or make a PDF, and then use that and screen share that, and that actually seems to work a lot better. That does often work a lot better. I did some training with Take Apart in Cheltenham, and one there was two there was two people running that session, and one person's PowerPoint worked, and the other one didn't. I think one of them was in Cornwall and the other lady was in Cheltenham and her hers worked perfectly. Everyone could see it. It was about 20 of us. So again, you could back do, up. You back up. So, Honey, have, <laughs> so make screen grabs, make PDF files and save them in your chat. Save them on your because you can you can show them on there, which isn't ideal, but often it's just a reference for you. So have more than one option. <laughs> so yeah, but once you start prepping, the first time you do it, you're like, this is a, a hassle, but you just get into a rhythm and it, you just, and often you don't need your backups and you might be able to use them for other workshops or, or aspects of them. I've got templates for mine and then I just adapt them for different workshops, put different people's logos on them. So I'm, you know, in a rhythm and I like, I like having files put things in named files as well because I might have named a file something that doesn't make any sense to me at a later date and you don't want to be faffing about on your computer looking for it so arts connection oh yeah thunder yes it's thundering places um arts connection have their own file for me and I keep everything for them and sometimes it means I keep duplicate copies but I've paid for Dropbox so I've got a lot of room on there so it's it's worth it for me but you just have to work out what works for you because you might not need that many reference things you might Yours might be all spoken word and a lot of this might be irrelevant to you, but it's nice to know you've got the options because people learn and engage in different ways. So, yeah. And also I think having something like that or a system where, so we quite often ask people to email us or Facebook kind of the images or what they've been making so that we can actually see a bit better what they've been doing. So you may want to think about how you're uh, getting feedback from them in terms of comments, how it went. So I'm going to, this is our form. I'd love you to fill it in at the end of this to tell us how this went, but you might want to think about how you're gathering feedback from people, whether that's on the chat or using Google Forms or something similar that's easy for people to link to. And also, you know, how do they get images or maybe they've done a song, are they going to email them to you? So just thinking about how you kind of maybe, because like you said, that's the worst thing about this, it's got to do workshops and you don't really get to see properly what people have been doing um, and you can feel a bit afloat from that then. So I think having a little think about the end, what you, you're doing at the end and um, how you're signing off and how you're gathering feedback. Yeah, and feedback doesn't all have to, depending on your group, if you're working with people with SEN, um, which I do sometimes, then I, I make feedback that is pictorial and I really think about the questions that I'm asking people, like there won't be like a sub question within that question because you want them to be able to give honest and honest feedback in a way that, that fits for them as well. So, um, or people can even, depending, probably not for this, probably not for Arts Connection, but they can leave voice notes instead. So just so, because this, this is such a barrier, the internet, and if you've already, you've managed to get Wi-Fi or mobile data, you want after that it to be as simple as possible to access and not everyone's confident with their writing or feel like they can articulate it as well. So, or they might not want to answer straight away. So you might want to give, let feedback come in over a few days or something. Yeah. And I saw somebody, and I think this is actually a really good, probably starting point. Uh, a lot of people we found, uh, if you're going to use Zoom, you need to be using Chrome. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Firefox, other things. So we tend to find when people have had issues getting online or you know accessing it because they're not on Google Chrome. Okay. So whether you want to put that in your blurb, I think you might do that. Uh, but actually thinking about those things and also just being aware, going back to some of the other things we've been saying, is if you're used to using, like I'm using a desktop, it's worth maybe trying to access something on Android, on Android, on an iPhone, just so you can see where all the different settings are. Mm -hmm. So when you're saying things to people, it's apply. you can say it for the iPhone user, the Android user, the laptop user, because otherwise, um, yeah, that can make it quite hard for people to um, engage. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, because I was once doing a workshop where I, because um, I do some still life work and then not everyone has the relevant objects. So I always try and have the same objects as well and put it on the screen. And one lady was saying, oh, can you put it in the middle? Because I can't see, um, I can't see it. And I thought, and that didn't really make any sense because you should just see what's on my screen. But I think she had a tab over the top of it. So people aren't necessarily confident with Zoom. They probably aren't confident using computers at all. So um, those are things that Shanez and Sean will guide people through as well, because every, there's so many variations, but once they're through on the first Zoom and they feel comfortable, they'll, you know, they'll come to more things <laughs> and they'll, their, their confidence will build as well. So yeah, and sometimes people leave the session because they've got other things to do or their, their connection has failed and things like that. So if you warn people that if you're gonna, if you have to dip out for whatever reason, then um, you're more than welcome to come back in as well. So that kind of reassurance, because I think on our drawing one, it says something like um, it's 90 minutes, but you can dip in and out and, or you can stay the full 90 minutes until your hand drops off or whatever, because we want, because sometimes people, even like in real life, if they see a door that shuts, the lights can be all on, but they won't push that door. So you want to make it as few barriers as possible for people to engage. Yeah. Can I just bring in um, Kirsty's question? Kirsty was asking <laughs> about showing showing work to the screen and how that's back to front sometimes. So if you so say you're doing a writing exercise, you need to be able to read what you're holding up, don't you? Um, so if you go to your 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 video icon in the bottom left, and then your video settings, so you get that from your little up arrow next door to your video icon, and then you can unclick mirror my video. That's so cool. So that if you go either way, one way or the other. So if you're showing written text, that makes a big difference. So that's something I found today oh, as well. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Where was that again? That was in. Uh, so video video settings and then it's just unticking mirror my video mirror my video that's brilliant thank you <laughs> i think somebody's just asking here about also saving the chat these are some things you should be aware of with zoom as well about the access to it and why it's worth particularly where vulnerable vulnerable groups to check it so if you went to the chat now and clicked on the three dots you should get the you'll get the option to save the chat and that's saved to every you can enable and disable these as you for each workshop and as you go along but it's also worth knowing that people can actually record these meetings onto their own computer uh, so it is about going through your settings a lot of the time and just thinking about how open you want it to be how much you need it to be open for you to share things but also being very aware that allows other people to um, so I was going to say, like some people have shared their emails. Sometimes I would say do that privately because otherwise other people, and in this context, we're probably all quite professional. That's okay. But you may find people are doing that person and people can save those chats. Uh, so I think it's, uh, you know, you need to maybe mention that or disable it or be quite clear on that sometimes uh, at the beginning of the workshop. And I'll just say that um, Ruth Bradshaw has asked specifically for, for more information on music performance through Zoom. So we'll add that to our list of, because um, there's lots of information out there. So yeah. when we're sending you out the info next week, we'll make sure we'll find some more stuff specifically for music performance. And also, I think for all of you out there who are very creative, I think, you know, you could also see this. I think, Jamila, you've already touched on this about seeing it as a, 
uh, way to maybe play with this platform. So I don't know if any of you know, but the biggest selling film at the moment is a film called Unsubscribe that was made using Zoom. And what they've done is it's all for free. And they've said, right, how do we make a film? How do we collaborate? And they've done it all through Zoom. Um, and, you know, so I think it's also thinking about how could you use this creatively um, with your own art forms? And there's lots of examples out there about how people have been uh, collaborating. I, I know that thing, people are doing things around the exquisite corpse um, and using that to create films and pictures and writing and things like that. So I think it's also an interesting platform to explore uh, in a creative, you know, from a creative point of view as well. Yeah, I don't think that everything has to happen within the session as well. I think if things can ha if you if it works better for you for people to do things separately, I don't think you should be afraid for um, for things because they, they might work better that way. So it, it's really you know it's very try and be as person centred for you as well. And I aim to try and make work within my session as well, even if it's just one complete piece or finish something later. So, um, yeah, I think this is this this could be a starting point. And if you're having repeat visitors and you can get to know people better, I don't think it's terrible that everything doesn't have to happen with it, because that can be quite draining for you and for the participants as well, because it is it is a lot of concentration just staring at one screen. Because even if you're watching TV at home, you'd probably, you know, file your nails or send a text and stuff. So, you know, it is a lot um, to just have everyone like just staring at you and stuff. So but lovely, all your faces are lovely. <laughs> well, I'll say that it's come to the hour and a half mark actually. So uh, um, I, we haven't seen any more questions come up. Um, so I think we'll probably come to a close then unless there's anything last that anybody wants to share. Sean, Ed, I don't know if you want to. Um, Amanda's just asking, can we disable chat for participants? I'm not actually sure off the top of my head, but we can definitely check that out. Yes, you can. You yeah. can, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll work out how to do it and pop that in the notes for next week. Um, but what, what I'd like to say really is we were just really hoping that this session would give artists confidence to, you know, strike out on their own now and see if, you know, as Arts Connection, we work, we work with fantastic artists in North Powys, Wrexham, and it's such a shame that people are now stuck at home and not able to deliver. So we really hope that this session is going to give you some confidence to work either with us to deliver sessions online or maybe deliver your own sessions and to develop your practice. Because some of you will be sheltering, you know, it's it's a really difficult environment out there. So that, that was our hope, is to give you some confidence and to bring you along with us and to share some of the exciting experiences we've had, some of the problems, but on the whole, that it's been a very positive experience for us. And we've been welcomed into so many kitchens and lounges and gardens and seeing children, families, people enjoying themselves, interacting, sharing. So, you know, it's been very, very good for us. So we just hope that we can give you some of that experience and that you can then take that and start delivering yourselves. Yes, so that's the idea really. The feedback form is there if you'd like to fill that in, it's really helpful for us. Um, you can leave little comments there as well if you like, but um, follow us on Facebook if you don't already. Keep in the loop and hopefully we can work with you all again sometime in the future. Thank you. That was really great. I've learned stuff as well, so this is brilliant. Thank you very much everybody. It's a really big turnout. I think this is really yeah, helpful. I can't believe how many people have come. It's fantastic. I wanted to thank you, Jamila, as well, for hosting and for sharing all your experiences. Um, because it's just been yeah, really nice to hear from somebody who's had a lot of experience of this now. Oh, yeah. I'm, like my child just says Zoom, like it's a just a just a normal part of our lives. <laughs> so yeah, thank you. Didn't even oh, heard of Zoom four months ago. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Um, and uh, we have to do the obligatory wave that you never do in real life. We have to. <laughs>